All right, so I'm about to assemble the frame. And here I'm going to take a look at the instruction manual. So on the very top, I'll have to install the TPU antenna base, which is over here. Then we have the top plate, this one. And in between, we have the ducts. And on the bottom, we have the bottom plate or the base plate. So if I arrange the components like this, we can get an idea of how the frame will look. So assembling the frame is quite easy. All the parts just fit directly and, and we just have to install the screws. And here on this back side, we can install the antenna base or the antenna mount. And the bottom side on every corner, there is this TPU bracket which will hold the duct to the bottom frame. So four on each side. And then the GoPro TPU mount will be installed on the front side. So here I have the flight controller. Based on the front arrow, I'll have to install this somewhere over here. Then to access the USB port, I'll have to use these adapters that were included in the kit. And I thought these were to power up the GoPro camera. But actually, I think this will be used as an extension adapter to connect the USB cable for the flight controller. Alright, so first I'll be installing the motors on the bottom plate. And there are four screws for each motor. So I've installed the four motors on the bottom plate and the main problem was to get the correct screw size because the screws that were included in the motor box were I think six to eight millimeters but I had to cut the screws to four millimeters in length and then I was able to install the motor without the screw touching the motor coil. So I was able to install the screws on all the motors properly except for this one motor where the threading for uh, one of the screw was damaged. So this motor is secured with three screws on it, whereas the rest of the three motors are installed properly. Even this is quite snug. It's just that it doesn't have one screw on the bottom. So to install these motors on the frame, the correct size of the screws is M2 by four millimeters. Even a five millimeter screw is just fine. It's just that if you go beyond five, you will notice that the screw will touch the the motor windings so that's not good so because i have to install the flight controller in this orientation and i have to utilize the 25 millimeter layout holes i decided to increase the hole diameter so that i can install a m3 screw and then use the standard gummies and then install the flight controller and now i'll slide the rubber gummies on the flight controller Now before I install the flight controller, I'm going to install this Panda RC VTX on the frame. And as you can see that I've already soldered the wires on the VTX. And I'll be mounting the VTX on the 20 by 20 millimeter layout on the bottom plate. So I've utilized some old rubber gummies and I've used those as spacers between the VTX and the frame. And then I've secured the VTX with four M2 screws and M2 nuts. And then I've used the zip tie to secure the UFL antenna. And then I've installed the flight controller on top of the VTX. Here's how it looks. And there is good spacing between the VTX and the flight controller. So there is no problem as such. And here I've soldered the XT60 connector along with the capacitor and the wire for the VTX and the camera on the flight controller. So no smoke or anything as such, everything seems to be working just fine. So the VTX camera and the flight control are working well. And here I can see the video feed on my cell phone.
So now it's time to trim the motor wires and then solder them to the ESC pads. And here I've soldered the motor wires to the ESC connections. And if you notice, I've also soldered the wire for the receiver. So the positive signal and the ground wire. So I'm using the Flysky X6P receiver and that should do the job for this Zinevoop. So let's power up the flight controller once more. Alright, so everything is working well. Alright, so now I can install the ducts and then install the top plate as well. So the ducts simply mount on to the bottom plate and all I have to do is just install the M2 screws. And then the TPU bracket which holds the bottom plate and the duct together. So here's how the frame looks once the ducts are installed. And here I've installed the Cadex Nano camera and this was quite easy as well. All I had to do is just slot the camera in between the frame and then use the M2 screws from the side and then secure it. And then I've used a few zip ties to secure the receiver to the frame. And then I've installed the M3 nuts to secure the flight controller. And now it's time to install the USB adapter so that I can access the flight controller by simply plugging in the USB cable from the top plate. So this is where the USB port will be installed using two standoffs. So once I connect the extension wire, I can plug the USB adapter into the flight controller USB port. And then I'll install the plastic standoff. And then install the other end of the USB port uh, to the standoff. So by simply plugging in the USB cable from here, you can access the flight controller very easily. And now I'll install the top TPU antenna mount. So I'll slide the XT60 connector and the receiver wires.
and lastly I'll install the GoPro mount. And here I'm installing the foam pad on the duct. So I just have to slide it in the slot and it's secured to the frame. So I've installed everything and the build is finally completed. So the receiver and the motor protocol and various other settings are all uh, configured in Betaflight. So all I have to do is just arm the quad and fly it and see how it flies. It was fairly easy to assemble the quad. The only trouble that I had was with the USB adapter. So if you remember the USB adapters that are included in the kit. So the USB adapter is connected to the USB port of the flight controller. And because the USB port on my flight controller is on this side, I had some trouble installing the USB adapter. So I used my soldering iron and I made some space around this corner so that the adapter could fit in. And the other problem that I had was to get the camera control working for this Cadex Nano camera. And it turned out to be a few settings for the camera control which I had to adjust. And then I got it working but I had to spend some time trying to figure that out. So, And then to power up the quad, uh, I bought the 6S battery. and. I did try this with a 4S battery, but I had to uh, increase the throttle to at least 60 to 70% to keep it in the air. So it was very evident that I had to use a 6S battery. So for now, I have the 650 mAh 6S LiPo. And with this, the quad actually flies quite well. So around 20 to 25% throttle, the quad is actually in the air and, and it is quite responsive on a 6S LiPo. Now I'll be sharing a flight video very soon once I get to test this and once I get comfortable with it. But if you found this video helpful, you can like it and subscribe to my channel. If you have any other questions regarding the frame or the build, you can comment them below. So thanks a lot for watching and stay tuned for more videos.